In Dungeons & Dragons, the name Tasha was first introduced in 1982 when author Gary Gygax responded to a young girl writing to him in crayon asking him to create a spell involving laughter. In response, he created the spell Tasha's Uncontrollable Hideous Laughter, which was named after the girl and then included it in Dungeon Magazine number 67 in 1984. And later, it would be included in the second edition player's handbook in 1989. Tasha's next appearance was in Dragon Magazine number 82, where the spellbook Lore of Subtle Communication by Tasha was added and included several spells such as Ventriloquism, Message, and Comprehend Languages. No other context was given for who Tasha was until two years later when Natasha the Dark was introduced in the adventure exploring Baba Yaga's hut, but it was unclear whether Gygax intended for the two characters to be the same at the time. Later in 2007, Erica Mona, James Jacobs, and Jason Balmon retconned the character of Tasha, revealing that Archmage Igwilf, Natasha the Dark, and Tasha were one in the same. Igwilf, who was originally portrayed as a male, was first introduced in 1982 in the adventure module The Lost Caverns of Sokanth. In this adventure, Igwilf, or Tasha, created the book The Demonomicon of Igwilf, which was described as a treatise on the evil creatures of the Lower Plains. It wasn't until much later that the character of Tasha would be fleshed out into the Witch Queen in Arkfey that is known today. Having originated in the world of Orth within the Grey Space, Tasha was born to unknown parents centuries ago. In her youth, she was adopted by the mother of all witches, Baba Yaga, who was known to be the most powerful female mage and Arkfey of all time. Being the most well-known of Baba Yaga's daughters, Tasha was raised within the Feywilds and was introduced to the secret magics by her adoptive mother. Even though she resented growing up in the Feywilds due to the frequent and unnatural bizarre occurrences, she became a powerful mage in her own right and was given the moniker Natasha the Dark. This was perhaps in contrast to another of Baba Yaga's daughters, Alania the Fair. Aside from Alania, Tasha had three other adoptive sisters, Bavlornia Blightstraw, Scabatha Nightshare, and Edelin Moongrave, who together made up the Hourglass Coven. The sisters each despised each other and often conspired in pairs for the downfall of the third sister. Tasha was eventually betrayed by the three other daughters of Baba Yaga when they used the magic of Tasha's personal cauldron against her to freeze in time Tasha and her allies. Craving her freedom from Baba Yaga's dancing hut, Tasha ran away taking different names in her journey. After fleeing the hut, she found herself in the world of Oerth in the political state of Ket, which was an important nexus of trade routes within the Lapola province. Here she adopted the alias Hura and conducted terrible experiments. After plundering the Vault of Daub, Tasha was driven from the Lapula province and found herself in care of an archmage named Zagig, who later took her on as an apprentice. At this time, she also joined his adventuring group, the Company of Seven, and together gained great fame and power in the world of Oerth. It was this time that Tasha was said to have created her spell, Tasha's Uncontrollable Hideous Laughter. Tasha hid her true ability and posed as a spellcaster less capable of what her strength truly was in order to hide her identity. But before long, the Company of Seven parted ways due to disagreements between the members. After moving to the city of Greyhawk, she and Zagig took on a more scandalous relationship studying creatures of the Outer Plains and engaging in summoning rituals. Tasha had a great interest in the Abyss and learned a great deal under Zagig's tutelage. Their greatest feat was the summoning and imprisonment of the demon lord Fraz Herb Lu with the aid of several of the demon lord's rivals. And thus, Tasha interrogated the demon lord, learning valuable secrets to bolster her own power in summoning prowess. Tasha, however, was not satisfied with sharing power with Zagin, and after looting his libraries and stealing the Tome of Zix, Zagig's Tome of Demonology, he fled to a mountain that would later be known as Igwilv's Horn. After arriving at Igwilv's Horn, she uncovered the cavern that housed the Tomb of the Archmaid Sokanth, first introduced in the 1982 adventure book The Lost Caverns of Sokanth and using the power and knowledge she gained from Frazer Blue, she raised and bound the Archmaid Sokanth, using him as a slave for generations to come. It was at this point that Tasha renamed the Tome of Zix to the Demonomicon of Igwilv, claiming it as her own. 
Using the knowledge of the book and what he had learned from Archmaid Sokanth, she then summoned and imprisoned another demon lord named Grazit. And after seducing him to her cause, she used him to plan a conquest of Parandland, a neighboring country that had begun to grow in concern of Tosh and her demons. The conquest of Parandland saw the alliance between Parandland and Ket. The alliance proved futile, however, when Tasha, with the help of Luz, the half-demon demigod of the Grazit and Tasha, used his forces to conquer the lands around Igwil's Horn, and not long after, managed to enslave all of Parandland. Establishing herself as the Witch Queen, she continued her conquest taking Lake Quad to the north and attacking the Wolf Nomads and plundering their wealth to fund her magical research. It was at this time Tasha gave birth to her daughter Drilzna. Being influenced by Grazit, Tasha's hunger for conquest grew more and more and she set her eyes on the land that exiled her, Ket. It was at this time Grazet began to grow resentful of his continued exploitation by the Witch Queen and planned his own escape from her control. Not long after, a rift began to grow beneath Tasha's lair that led into the Abyss, a dangerous side effect of demonology. Grazet proposed using the Archmage Sokanth, whom she imprisoned centuries before, to seal the rift. When she attempted this though, the Archmage Sokanth attacked surprising Tasha. She managed to defeat him, but in her weakened state, the demon lord Grazid managed to break from her control and took the opportunity to mercilessly attack Tasha in a titanic battle that was said to shake the mountains they resided on. Tasha used every spell, artifact, and ally at her disposal, and barely, she managed to defeat Grazik slaying his corporeal body and banishing him to the abyss for 100 years. Exhausted and greatly weakened, she had no allies left, and thus her reign over Perrinland had ended. Tasha then abandoned the Lost Caverns and fled north with her son Luz, who she helped to gain power. Presumed dead by her former servants, they plundered her magical items and riches, including another of her authored spellbooks, Igwilv's Nether Tome. Later, when the Lost Caverns of Sokanth were rediscovered, the Circle of Eight led by Mordenkainen quietly sponsored groups of adventurers to loot the cavern. While there, the adventurers confronted Tasha's daughter Drelzna, now a vampire, who was then defeated and destroyed while guarding the ruins. Some time later, Tasha attempted to the attack the group the Flanius with an army of demons, and the Circle of Eight again intervened hiring more adventurers who managed to defeat her. But not before she corrupted the Crook of Rao, a staff created by the god Rao which was used against her. Despite all this, she is also known to have a companionship with Mordenkainen, whom she views as something of a toy. Years later, prior to the Greyhawk Wars, Tasha recovered most of her power and returned to Oerf. It was at this time Tasha made an attempt to summon her former lover, the demon lord Grazit, a second time and imprison him to her will. Grazit was ready for this though, and having attained a unique artifact, he used it to break her magic circle and capture Tasha, taking her back to the Abyss, where she would be imprisoned in the Argent Palace. Despite their complicated relationship, Tasha considered Grazit the only demon lord who was worthy of her gaze. And during her time in captivity, she bore him many children. Though neither trusted the other, they also kept no secrets between them. Each of them desires to the imprison and control the other, but on occasion show tenderness to one another, even going as far to rescue the other from peril. Being silent for centuries, Tasha would only resurface after a demon by the name of Tarni freed her from Grazit's grasp. Tarni, once a tyrant mage of Oerth, requested the aid of Tasha and returned for her freedom. After agreeing to his terms, Tasha summoned legions of demons upon the world. During this conquest, though, Tarni was slain and Tasha withdrew her aid. Instead, she turned inward on herself, focusing on expanding her own power. Tasha now wanders the plains, occasionally taking part in celestial politics. She would later appear as the narrator of the source book Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, which depicted a version of her before the Greyhawk Wars, revealing some previously unknown lore about her character. The book also includes spells including but not limited to Summoned Fiend, Spirit Shroud, Tasha's Mind Whip, and Tasha's Caustic Brew. It also includes subclasses such as Alchemist, Artillerist, Rune Knight, and Swarm Keeper. In 2021, she also appears in the adventure book Wild Beyond the Witchlight, a fate-centric adventure that takes players from a mysterious circus on the material plane into the whimsical plane of the Fae, once there, they are tasked with figuring out the dark presence that has overtaken the realm.